Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> let's look at section 7.2. The important part of the directions tells us to assume the variables represent positive real numbers. What that basically means is throughout this whole section, if an answer contains a variable, you may assume it's positive so you don't need to worry about slapping on absolute value bars when the index is even. Let's use the product rule. A square root times a square root gives me a square root. 7 times 7 is 49. And then the square root of 49 becomes 7. This is, this is also... Doggies, hush! This is also the product rule. The square root times the square root becomes a single square root. 25, I mean rather, 5 times 125 is 625. And the square root of 625 is 25. So, here, this is actually going to be the quotient rule because 36 divided by 49 is the quotient. When we see a quotient under a radical, we're allowed to split it. Square root of 36 on the top, square root of 49 on the bottom, and when we simplify, or rather evaluate, 6 over 7. Okay? Now, this one's kind of ugly. But look what happens. A square root times a square root becomes a square root. 3 times 27 is 81. 5 times 125 is 625. When I break this apart, I have the square root of 81 on the top. I have the square root of 625 on the bottom or in the denominator. And when I evaluate those, I end up with a 9 divided by 25. And we're set. Now, the square root of 40 divided by the square root of 10. What we're actually going to do here is we're going to use the quotient rule in the reverse direction. If you can split things apart for a quotient, you can also put them back together. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take these two radicals and make them one big radical. And I'm going to put the quotient, which would be 40 divided by 10, under that radical. 40 divided by 10 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. Likewise, in this problem, I have two square roots that have been divided. I can put them both back together under one roof. So I have this on the top, 50y cubed, and 2y on the bottom. When I simplify what's under the radical, the 50 divided by 2, of course, is 25. y to the third divided by y is y squared. And when I take the square root of 25y squared, the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of y squared, remember the index is 2, 2 divided by 2 is a 1, that leaves me with y to the first. And the reason that I don't need to put absolute value bars on this is because I was told at the beginning of this section that variables are all positive. Okay. The square root of 16y to the sixth. This is basically a product. So I'm allowed to separate it into two radicals being multiplied together. The square root of 16 is obviously 4. That's easy. Remember the index is a 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 
that becomes y to the third as my answer. So my total answer is 4y to the third.